I'm recreating an 18th century grand tour, the original gap year trip across Europe to see all the most important art, architecture and history of the ancient and modern world. I've been to Paris, Venice and Rome, following in the footsteps of the original tourists. But if I'm being honest, so far it's been a bit of a sausage fest. These types of lads, the column measuring, portrait commissioning type, dominated tourism in Europe for over a century. But by the 19th century, however, there was another type of tourist starting to flood into Europe in droves. Women. In the words of 18th century writer Samuel Johnson, a man who has not been to Italy is always conscious of an inferiority. But I'm not a man, and Samuel Johnson never actually went to Italy. So what I want to know is, what were the girlies up to? In order to find out, I'm going to call an expert. Hello, Mum. Can you see me? No, I can't. I can't see you. I might need to turn on the, the video part. This is my mum. I know, but where's that? Contrary to popular belief, she wasn't around during the 19th century. Um, microphone. Next to that. Dart video, but it's got a cross through it. But she has yeah, spent a fair bit of time researching some ladies who were. Yeah, Ooh. there you are. Hi, Mary. I'm um, I'm your mother. And <laughs> who First of all, um, how, how long have you been doing family history research? Well, since uh, before you were born, so probably about 30 years. How did you first come across the Cobden family? Well, you're four times great grandmother was a Cobden. Her brother was Richard Cobden, who was in his day, he was internationally famous. First of all, for Mum can talk about Richard Cobden for hours, so here's the short version. Richard Cobden was a 19th century factory owner and a politician. He was famous because of his battle against this thing called the Corn Laws, laws that protected landowners in the United Kingdom by heavily restricting the import of grain from other countries. These laws were incredibly unpopular because when English crops failed, the price of food went up and people starved. So his big ambition in life was to repeal those Corn Laws, which he finally achieved in 1846. He married and had several children, two of which are in that photograph you're going to talk about. So far on this series, you'd be forgiven for thinking that travel in the 18th and 19th century was largely only for the posh boys, and you'd be right. Although some women also took part in the Grand Tour, they often had to travel with male chaperones, like their husbands or fathers, and didn't always have the same freedom that male Grand Tourists did. By the mid to late 19th century, however, this was all about to change, largely due to the rise of women's emancipation and the invention of the railway. And those two things are far more connected than you might initially think. These two ladies, for example, Jane and Annie Cobden, visited the Italian city of Siena in 1881, and they were photographed here at the studio of Paolo Lombardi. They also happened to be my ancestors. To start with Jane, she uh, was one of the first two women to be elected onto the London County Council. Jane was very much a supporter also of Irish home rule. She was also very passionate about South Africa, very much against the segregationist laws that were brought in and she she didn't marry till she was about 42 and she married Fisher Unwin. He was a known to be a radical publisher and he published a lot of her father's works as well. Annie was a couple of years younger. She was a very strong suffra suffragist. In fact, she wasn't a suffragist, she was a suffragette. A suffragist is a supporter of women's suffrage, so gaining the vote. A suffragette is someone that will resort to more militant means of achieving the same end. So Jane was a suffragist, but Annie was a suffragette. She um, was one of the women that was uh, arrested for um, getting into the lobby of the House of Commons to present the Prime Minister and government with a petition. And um, she was thrown into Holloway Prison in 1906. She became a socialist and she was also a wonderful um, speaker and she went to America and gave a whole tour because the USA was even further behind in women's suffrage and she had friends like Eleanor Roosevelt and people like that so she moved in in um, you know really interesting circles as well. Why do you think they went to Italy and like what do we know about that 
them as tourists. They were quite experienced travellers from an early age. Um, Jane had had some of her early education in Paris. Annie had had some of her early education in Germany. To say why they were in Italy, I have to take you back a little bit to after their, their mother died in, um, I think it was 1877. Their father had already died 12 years earlier. They came to live in Hammersmith, boarding with um, a family of George MacDonald, a Scottish writer. He um, was known to be quite a radical and um, a very bohemian. George MacDonald and his family also uh, lived for quite a bit of time in the late 1870s in Italy. I think that the girls, Annie and Jane, were perhaps visiting them as well. You might just also wonder about why Jane Morris is in the photograph. Well, that's my, that's my next question. Well, then again, we have to go back to Hammersmith. For those playing at home, this is Jane Morris. You might recognise her from this painting, or this one, or this one. Jane was an embroidery artist of the arts and crafts movement, as well as an artist model for the pre-Raphaelite painter Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Her husband was William Morris, the famous textile designer and socialist. And even if you've never heard of him, chances are you've seen his work on a tote bag or two. So George MacDonald and his family, they lived in this house called The Retreat. Eventually they had to leave it and William Morris and his family took over the lease and the Cobden women who'd been living with the MacDonalds stayed on with the um, Morrises for a time. Now here we have to link now into the man lying on the ground, Thomas James Sanderson. He was also a friend of the Morrises and it is said that he coined the phrase art and craft movement that M Morris was famous for. This whole arty scene that the Cobden sisters were involved with in Hammersmith believed very strongly in making things by hand. Their artworks, textiles, homewares, prints and books all took heavy inspiration from the Middle Ages because they wanted to return aesthetically to a time before industrialization. It was, if you like, the original cottage core. Siena being quite different to Florence and Rome, you know, Rome with the sort of more classical antiquities and, and um, Florence with the Renaissance, you know, high Renaissance work, etc. I think Siena was sort of regarded as, you know, this is where you go to see medieval work. And I think that was more closely connected to the philosophies, I suppose, of the arts and crafts movement and the pre-Raphaelites, going back to a pre-Raphael time, literally. What was like happening in the night in the late nineteenth century that allowed for more unmarried young women to travel to Italy? Well, I suppose um, improvement in transport was one thing. Train travel would have had a big impact on not just women, but everybody being able to travel much more easily. I think the fact that the Cobden women um, had such great connections would have been a, a wonderful kind of passport. And also the fact that the women were suffragists. They believed in women's rights. They believed in women being able to be independent. It was part of their lived experience to travel, to be worldly, to be interested in international affairs. Um, all those things um, supported their, you know, their interest in travel. It's hard to imagine the girls tackling these Sienese hills in those skirts, but can I just say, as a fellow lady traveller, I'm very grateful to them for paving the way for me and my grand tour today. There's definitely a movie in this, Mary. I'll write it one day. Next time on my grand tour, it's time for me to leave the girls behind in Siena and continue back on my journey south through Italy to one of my final stops on my grand tour. All of our religion, almost all of our law, almost all of our arts, almost all that sets us above savages has come to us from the shores of the Mediterranean. Yikes, it's a lot to unpack there.